last week a friend of mine stabbed herself in the finger and she severed one of the nerves here and while we've talked about the nerves that run into the hand and what they do we haven't looked at the branches within the hand and this is a fairly common injury so the question is what nerve did she sever what does that nerve do so what function did she lose how would you test for that where did the nerve come from um, and what might you do to repair it to tip the format on its head we'll do the last bit first um, but we'll look at we'll review the the median ulnar and radial nerves as they go to the hand and what they do and then we'll look at the individual branches um, but if you say so there are different ways of damaging a nerve as in a collection of neurons and you've got to think of a nerve as you know a collection of long cell axons bundled together so surrounded by myelin so they can be crushed or stretched um, or compressed and you know what it's like when you bang one you know what that sensation's like but if you sever it of course those axons get separated if they get pulled apart they get separated now if you leave that there is an attempt at repair from the severed axons and what tends to form is something called a, a neuroma which itself can be very painful um, when it develops over time and then it'll kind of exist forever and it'll it's very unlikely to join up with the other axons and reconnect and restore any sort of function so it's something that does need to be looked at and treated and considered but if a skilled surgeon is able to put the ends of the nerve back together there is a fair probability of the neurons repairing, uh, mending, um, a restoration of function and that neuroma won't form. So you've got to know your anatomy to be able to do things like that. The three major nerves that innervate the hand, motor and sensory, are the median, ulna and radial nerves. These nerves all come from the brachial plexus, they run through the upper limb, they have various functions within the upper limb, but those are the three nerves that enter the hand and then have sensory roles from the skin and some motor roles to the muscles of the hand, but the radial nerve doesn't. Uh, doesn't. So it's just the ulna and the median nerves have, they can innervate these small muscles of the hand that are involved in movements of the digits. So those are the three. Right. That was the easy bit. Okay, we'll do median nerve, then ulna nerve, then radial nerve. We're saving the easy one for the last. Um, if I'm really clever, I'll draw these on my own hand. Don't know how clever I am though. So the median nerve, um, out of the three, it's the only one that passes through the carpal tunnel. So in the bones of the wrist, they form a little U-shape which is overlain by the flexor retinaculum which ties down all the tendons running into the hand and the median nerve runs through that space which means it is vulnerable to compression within that space. So that's how the median nerve gets through the wrist into the hand but before it runs through the carpal tunnel the median nerve gives off a um, palmar cutaneous branch that's going to run to the skin kind of in the middle of the palm. So that branch isn't going to th go through the carpal tunnel, it's going to go superficial to the flexor retinaculum to carry sensory innervation back from this region here. So that's kind of the first branch. Then when the median nerve passes into the, into the hand, into the palm, deep to the flexor retinaculum, it gives off three branches. It gives off um, lateral and medial branches and a recurrent branch. Now this muscle belly here, this that we take for granted, this is the thenar eminence. These are the intrinsic muscles of the thumb, intrinsic because they're within the hand. These muscles of the thenar eminence are innervated by the median nerve. This is your big indicator as to whether the median nerve is happy or not, if it's injured or not, and it's the recurrent branch of the median nerve that innervates these muscles and that branch branches from the median nerve after it has passed through the carpal tunnel, right? 
Now the medial and lateral branches are uh, well, they're going to be um, sensory. So right, when we're talking medial and lateral, we're in our anatomical position, right? So the anatomical position is so if this is the anatomical position, this then is medial and this is lateral. Now the radius is on this side, this is where the radial pulse is. So the lateral side also might get called the radial side, that's the side the thumb is on. The little finger is on the medial side, that might get called the ulnar side. For today we're going we're gonna to talk about the, the lateral and medial sides because we're going to talk about lateral and medial branches. Can you see how if we were to talk about radial branches of the median nerve, it would get really confusing really quickly? So we're not going to do that, right? Okay, thumb lateral. So the, the lateral branch then of the median nerve um, in the palm is going to run out laterally towards the thumb. Sensory. So this is going to carry sensory innervation back from the palmar side, this side, of the skin of the thumb and the palmar side of this side of the first finger. So it's sensory from the first and second digits, this part of the second digit, the lateral part of the second digit, also known as the index finger or the first finger. So with hands, there's kind of a lot of terminology and you need to know it all. First finger, index finger, second digit, all of that stuff, right? Um, also, that lateral branch of the median nerve in the hand is motor to the first lumbrical. Um, the lumbricals, little wormy muscles involved in the fingers, go read about those elsewhere. So it has a motor job and a sensory job. So the medial branch of the median nerve in the hand is going to give off branches that will run up this side of the first finger, both sides of the second finger, and this side of the third finger. It's going to carry sensory innervation back from, you know, this side and the palmar surface of the index finger, the palmar surface of the second finger, and the lateral surface and palmar surface, or half the palmar surface, of the third finger. So the medial branch of the median nerve in the hand is going to be sensory to part of the second digit, the palmar surface of the third digit and part of the fourth digit. And it's also going to have a motor function, it's going to be motor to the second lumbrical. Talk to hand surgeons and you'll get some more terms. So, the, the branches, the nerves that branch from the lateral and medial branches of the median nerve that run up the fingers will also get called common palmar digital nerves and proper palmar digital nerves. So the common palmar digital nerve is one that's going to run up towards the finger and then it's going to give off other branches. So it's a common nerve, a common palmar digital nerve, and then it divides into two proper palmar digital nerves, which are going to run up these sides of the fingers, either side here. Do you see what I mean? So common palmar and proper palmar. Common means it's going to divide proper palmar digital nerve means it is a proper, it has divided, it's that that are at risk of injury. Here you can see actually I've got a scar there because um, the way these, these get injured is you tend to have a knife in your dominant hand, don't you? And you're opening something, cut. that's what I did, I did that when I was like 16, 17 probably, cutting open something and I slipped and I sliced through there and the scar's still there now. In fact there's two scars there, one there, one there. There's another scar there that was from dissecting um, articular cartilage from some bovine samples in a lab and I was rushing and I didn't have a chainmail glove on and I slipped and I cut through to the bone there, so that was nice. Anyway, so these injuries often hit the sides of the hand because somebody's usually holding something and it's these nerves here, these, these, these digital nerves or these proper digital nerves. We're talking about the palmar ones so far, we're going to see some dorsal ones in a minute it's those that are at risk of injury. Now, motor or sensory? Well, all the muscles are in here. So by the time you get past this joint, 
the nerves have only got a sensory job to do. There's no muscle in here. This is tendon and connective tissue that's pulling on the muscles to give us these movements. So if the nerve is injured up here, then there's going to be a loss of sensory information. But if the nerve is injured further down here, you can see how some of these branches have got both motor and sensory roles. So then you're going to have both motor and sensory deficits. Uh, and because there are a lot of branches, it takes you know, some careful examination and diagnosis to work out what's going on. Anyway, right, that's the medial nerve done. Those are all its branches. Uh, su uh, superficial palmar, recurrent, medial, sorry, lateral, lateral and medial branches of the medial, median nerve in the hand. Right, next, the ulnar nerve. So you know that the ulnar nerve runs around the medial epicondyle of the humerus, maybe, because that's your funny that's your funny bone, that's the bit that you bang. And of course, what tingles? Well, it's your little finger in this side of your hand. So that's the ulnar nerve is going to run into the hand on the medial side. This is the hypothenar eminence here, this, this fleshy bit of muscle here. Now, again, OK, first of all, the ulnar nerve does not run through the carpal tunnel to get into the hand. It runs superficial to the flexor retinaculum. Before the ulnar nerve runs into the hand, it gives off two branches. It also gives off, off a superficial palmar branch, which is going to carry sensory innovation back from the medial palm, close to the wrist and the skin around here. And it gives off a dorsal branch. Now, if this is the palmar side of the hand, this is the dorsal side. So the dorsal branch is going to run around here. Now, the dorsal branch of the ulnar nerve is going to carry sensory innervation back from the dorsal hand around here, the dorsal skin of the little finger, and the dorsal skin on the medial side of this finger here. So it's going to be sensory to digits 5 and half of digit 4 the ring finger. Again, the actual digital branches that are running up to the fingers are running laterally up here. So we have little palmar digital branches here and dorsal digital branches on the other side. So a lateral injury could injure either of those things. Dorsally, you can feel that the bone is very superficial. We've got a lot of connective tissue here. And on this side, of course, on the palmar side we've got a lot of tendons there. The nerves get out of the way and they run on either side of the finger, not on the front or the back. The dorsal branch of the ulnar nerve does not carry sensory innervation back from the tips. The, the tips, that sensory innervation is coming back on the palmar side, not the dorsal side, right? Works for the radial nerve over here too, we'll get to that. Right, okay, so um, ulnar nerve, that's a superficial palmar branch, a dorsal branch. It then gives off, it also gives off superficial and deep branches. The superficial and deep branches of the ulnar nerve into the hand branch off after the wrist. And the superficial branch is mostly sensory, the deep branch is motor. Right, so what have we got left then? If we said that the median nerve carries sensory innervation back from these regions of skin, then the superficial branch of the ulnar nerve is going to carry sensory innervation back from some of the palmar skin, from the from and the palmar the, the palmar skin of the little finger, and the palmar skin of the medial side of the third finger. So that is the palmar skin of digit five and the medial palmar skin of digit four. <laughs> It's, hopefully the pictures are doing a clearer job than maybe my descriptions. There's a lot going on here. If you look at the pictures and you learn those, that's how you hold on to it, right? But again, the superficial branch of the ulnar nerve is carrying sensory innovation back from the tips of these fingers, the whole tip here, and it shares that job with the median nerve over here. Okay, right. The deep branch of the ulnar nerve in the hand, and this makes sense, right? It's going to innervate the muscles. Muscles are deep, skin is superficial, right? Now, um, the list of muscles, well, okay. The deep branch of the ulnar nerve in the hand is going to innervate all the muscles of the hypothenar eminence. It's going to innervate the lumbricals of the fourth and fifth digits. It's going to innervate all of the interosseous muscles, 
both palmar and dorsal interosseous muscles. It's going to innervate the adductor pollicis muscle and it's going to innervate uh, one of the heads, the short head of flexor pollicis brevis. So those motor functions of the ulnar nerve in the hand that you've read about are carried out by that deep branch of the ulnar nerve the branches from the ulnar nerve after it is passed into the hand. The superficial branch does have a motor role. There's a, there's a little muscle here um, called palmaris brevis, brevis meaning short, um, which goes into the palm. That, uh, the superficial branch of the ulnar nerve innervates that muscle. Um, it's very much a textbook table thing. How useful that is as a piece of knowledge, I don't know. Okay then, the radial nerve. So the superficial branch of the radial nerve leaves the radial nerve at the cubital fossa and, and works its way actually this way in its thumb side, works its way all the way back to this region here. It's pretty well protected during its route. And the superficial branch is then sensory in the hand. It has a sensory role. We've covered all the motor bits with the other nerves. The superficial branch of the radial nerve runs into the hand around here and it's carrying sensory innervation back from the skin of the dorsal hand over on the thumb side, so on the lateral side, right? The radial side. Um, it carries sensory innervation back from the dorsal, the skin of the dorsal thumb, the dorsal hand, the dorsal skin of the first finger, the second finger, and the dorsal skin of the lateral half of the third finger, so digits one, two, three, and four, but not the tips. And that's it. So now, if you add up all the bits we've done, we can account for all of the cutaneous innervation from the skin of the hand and all of the muscles. Another useful thing that we can do here is we can consider dermatomes. Right. When we're thinking about peripheral nerves, we're thinking about bundles of neurons bundled together to travel throughout the body, but also we can consider those neurons as they come out of the, um, the spinal cord at different levels and then run through whichever route they want to take to get to the regions of the body. So we can test the functions of the levels of the cervical spinal cord by remembering that the sensory innovation from this region goes back to the C6 level, from this finger back to the C7 level, from this finger back to the C8 level. C6, C7, C8. Ooh. And there's some overlap in between of course because you've seen how the, the proper digital nerves work and how there's some overlap between median ulnar and radial, right? Good. Okay, there we go. That's a tough one. There's a lot in there. And you can see why there's a lot of detail in there, because hands are incredibly important to us. Um, we have a lot of fine control. We have a huge amount of sensory detail in the hands. So not only is there a lot of anatomy in there to account for that, but the knowledge of that anatomy is important to manage, maintain, repair function in the hand. All right? Bye. <laughs> See you next time. Ha <laughs>